skiing this afternoon. It's about minus 15. Wind is kind of gusty. But unlike the other day where the ice was crusted because of the meltdown, we've had some snow and it's just blown over everything quite quite evenly. And uh, it's one of those days where it's just a joy to be skiing. It's quiet. When it's crusty, the, the skis make a hell of a racket. But uh, I can just... I don't have my poles right now, I'm just shooting this with one hand, but the skis just go along si almost silently. I got my waxless Carhu Orions again. There's still patches of crust that would scrape wax off and these were convenient to grab super flotation. Yep, I think I'll ski down to the end of the lake and back. I've been looking for moose tracks everywhere. We've had the meltdown and the crust and the fresh snow, so that, that has erased a lot, but I finally found some. It looks like a moose came out just probably either last night, because it's been very windy and the snow's been moving, or a couple days ago. And this is also interesting as well. This is a rabbit or a snowshoe hare track. And it is coming from across the lake. Now if you're an owl at night looking for moving rabbits, this is what you probably dream about but it looks like the rabbit got into the bush let's see what the moose was feeding on it looks like he was feeding on something right by the shore here although the bush back here is just full of undergrowth so there's no shortage of browse no this is this is alder, he wasn't eating that. That's starvation food for moose. No, I think he just crashed through here. Yeah, definitely moose. Those, those uh, tracks are post hold down real deep. He just came out to check things out. Looks like he circled around and went back into the bush. Looks like a fox track. And then it intercepts a snowshoe hare track. Another one of those crazy snowshoe hares that decides to cross the lake. They must be desperate for food or something. Because you're just you're just totally open to predation from from owls and hawks and there's some eagles around still. So the fox intercepted it but the hare came across along earlier it wasn't there and the fox just carried on. Now this track is pretty interesting. It's very small and delicate and uh, I'll put my ski in between. It's, it's very small and it almost looks like two, two, two with a drag. And that's the, set, that's the mark of a mustelid. And I think this is a weasel that has come out from the bush onto the lake. And uh, there's hardly any imprint at all. It's not, it's not a fox, it's too small. And uh, Although it's fluffy snow, somewhat blown in, I think there's a pattern of two and two. Comes across, this is a, this is the fox track, but they probably came at different times. And the weasel is just hopping along. I, I think the span between those, that, that's, a, that's a long one there. That's about a foot and a half, which is quite long for a weasel. And then that one there is about a foot. And there's a bit of a body drag there. 
but it's so small and delicate I can't think of anything else it would be. It's, it's too big, it's way too big for mouse or vole. And it's just going out in the lake. Yeah, I think that was a little weasel. Or as they're called in the winter, ermine, because of their white coat. I found a weasel or, or ermine track in good shape out of the wind and you can see the two the two feet there and mustelids go two and two and two and they're often just staggered a bit although with a little ermine they're, they're so small that you can't really tell but you can clearly see the imprint of two and two and I think I think the back feet come in to the front feet uh, print for the second push off. So hop, hop, and then the uh, as the front feet leave, the back feet are coming into the same spot. And sometimes you see a bit of a drag. So little ermine track.